Hello, and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are still in the Staff Tool Strategies category of videos. We're talking about staff styles, and today we're actually going to be defining new staff styles. Now, from the staff menu, um, the staff style section of the staff menu here, the define staff styles will be the first option here. And when we uh, click on that, we'll get the staff styles uh, definition dialog box. There's a few different ways we can get to there besides going into the staff menu. Uh, we can right click any measure to pull up the contextual menu and it's the first option well, below help uh, for defined staff styles and that will pull up the same exact menu. From the selection tool, we can actually right click and go into the staff style section here and it's also the first option there, define staff styles. And there's actually one further way we can get to that menu if we were to choose in some way or another, um, applying staff styles to either score or, and part or uh, current score part. Um, in the apply staff styles window, there's actually a define button here. So if we click that, then we will pull up the staff styles um, uh, creation dialog box as well. Um, so we can get to it that way. So a myriad of ways to actually start stylizing our staff styles. So let's go into that uh, staff style dialog box and see what's going on here. Uh, first of all, in the top section here, you'll be able to see all of the available styles um, that exist in the file already. And we can add new ones or uh, pick one of these if we don't want it and just delete it. Um, there is no duplicate in this window. So unfortunately, you can't choose one uh, that you like and duplicate. You always have to start from scratch, unfortunately. But uh, you, you press new and it will give you this parentheses new staff style and you can name it anything you want. Just like that and uh, you're set to go. And then the, the second options here for the attributes for this particular staff style, there's two of them here. There's copyable, uh, which most of the time I think you're gonna wanna have checked. Uh, the next video in the series, I'm actually gonna talk about copying and pasting staff styles. So I'll talk more about this option. It's uh, kind of strange, but it's a little bit more um, involved than uh, what you might think, copying and pasting staff styles. So I, I've saved that for the next video. The second option here, display in, con in context menu, contextual menu, context menu, I guess they call it, um, will do just that. With this checked, then uh, when you click OK, uh, when you go into the contextual menu, you will actually see the, the new staff style here. Um, if you have that unchecked, go back to define staff styles, anything you want. If you uncheck that, then that, uh, that option will be suppressed from the contextual menu here. So uh, you have the option of doing that as well if you want. Could be handy if you've got like a whole lot of staff styles and it just gets in the way in that um, little contextual menu. The other thing worth noting is that these staff styles will always be listed alphabetically, which is why uh, Finale has actually numbered these to begin with so that they're in some sort of an order. Um, what I typed here, anything you want is going to go at the end because the A would come after the numbers anyway. But if you wanted to keep going in order, uh, it would kind of be important to, you know, n number this uh, number 22, for example. Uh, and uh, it will also stay in the correct order. Except, obviously, you can see that I unchecked display and contextual menu. There we go. Now it appears in the correct order there. Now, as I mentioned, everything in the uh, staff style dialog box is uh, an override of the staff attributes itself, except for a few things here. Uh, the full and abbreviated staff names, which you can um, uh, choose for any particular measure, including the positioning. And uh, so this will allow us to actually, you know, change the staff name temporarily for a certain number of measures if we want. The other thing is staff underneath appearance. So we can choose the standard five line or one line um, options here or zero lines or the other option for uh, staff styles, which I've covered a, a lot more in the um, uh, videos on the score manager because that is actually an option from the score manager. You'll see the, the staff uh, situation down here on the lower right. Incidentally, the uh, staff names are also part of the score manager. So, uh, you know, it's borrow the staff styles are borrowing a couple of options that can be overridden not only from the staff attributes but from the score manager as well. The transposition is the other one that's uh, that exists in the score manager as opposed to the staff attributes. Now within this uh, dialog box you have uh, all of these options for behaviors, appearance, items, the uh, independent elements, etc. And most of these are all of them currently because I just created a new one have these little dash marks or minus signs in these boxes as opposed to having an empty box or a check mark. The minus sign means that you're going to not make any change to whatever particular 
particular element the minus sign is next to um, in regards to uh, the staff attributes. So in this case, I'm not going to make any di change to the items to display augmentation dots. If the augmentation dots is turned off in this staff, it will remain off. If the augmentation dots is turned on in this staff, it will remain on, right? If I were to check that, then regardless of what the state of the augmentation dots are in the staff, then the augmentation dots will definitely be on with this staff style. If I uncheck it again, regardless of the state in the staff attributes, then in the staff style, the augmentation dots will be turned off. So that's what's going on here with the three states of these checkboxes. Um, most of the time, all of these boxes should be minus signs, unless you're doing something specific where you need to definitely hide cords, for example, or, you know, definitely uh, show the staff name and parts or something like that. Uh, so that's sort of how, how this all works. So let me just actually go through some of these preset ones, just so you can kind of see how these are built a little bit. So I've got the slash notation here, and most everything is a dash mark, meaning there's no change except for the alternate notation and the, the chords and fretboards, and there's a reason for that um, related to the alternate notation. So if we take a look at what's going on in the alternate notation, you'll see that for this slash notation staff style, we have slash notation selected with the uh, check mark for the add dots. Um, and also the, the all layers for chords and fretboards are checked. That's actually why it's checked over here as well. You can't actually have an alternate notation um, without the, um, the chords and fretboards reflecting the same state here as it does over here. It's just a weird little oddity of that. So, you know, that's, that's a slash notation. The rhythmic notation is pretty similar, similarly set up. Uh, the alternate nota notation is just different, set to rhythmic notation. Um, a lot of these staff styles have to do with alternate notation. Blank notation is also uh, a setting in the appearance, although if you saw this option here to display rest and empty measures also got um, unchecked as well. So, the, so that's another thing. Again, you don't have to change one thing. You can change one thing or two things or three things or all of the things uh, for any of these staff styles. All right, so uh, layer four is another alternate um, notation. Blank notation applied to layer four. Uh, a lot of different things. Let's see if we can find something else here. The one line staff. Um, this is not using an alternate notation. In fact, everything's minus or, or dashed in these boxes, um, but the appearance is different. Instead of saying no change over here, it's changing over to one line with full bar line. So that's how this staff style is uh, uh, affecting that, um, uh, that, that appearance. What else do we have? Uh, I think something like the finale alpha notes you know, is going to use the note shape. So now the note shape, note shapes is checked and the settings are all set up for the alpha notes as well as the independent elements uh, for the note head fonts. This is probably set to finale alpha notes. Exactly. So, uh, you know, there's two things going on with the um, alpha notes, note names um, going on there. So you can kind of see how these are built. And um, as you can imagine, the sky's the limit. You can create staff styles that will do anything to any of these settings and any combination of these settings. I mean, literally, the, the possibilities are, are endless here. But let me give you a, a few practical ways to use this. So um, this happens to me a lot in, when I'm doing musical theater. Um, I'll often just have one vocal staff, and every once in a while, um, I, I would want to um, change the staff name to a, a specific character instead of saying vocals, or I'll start with a character and then change it to something else. Uh, so what I can do is create a staff style, and uh, you know what? I'm just going to change this anything you want. I'm going to call this um, name, let's call her Mary. Mary is going to be our singer here. And uh, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the full and abbreviated staff name. So I'm going to check these so that uh, Finale knows with this staff style, I definitely want to change uh, this full and staff names to something else. And we can choose, um, we can write Mary here. And in the abbreviated version, we can say M period. And uh, that's it. We, d we don't need to deal with a position because the position will be the same for this uh, staff style. Although you could change it if you wanted to uh, adjust it for whatever reason. And click OK. And of course, you do have to apply it. So we're going to apply it to current part and score only. Uh, name Mary. And you'll see that the M will appear because, again, this is uh, you know the second uh, system. So you're not going to see the full M. Uh, incidentally, you can do the same thing. Oops. 
Uh, oh, I should have mentioned, when you have a staff style here, you can always double click that staff style and that will pull up the definition for that particular staff style. So this is a quick way to get into these staff styles again to um, re-edit them. Now you can also use this uh, if you need to temporarily not show the staff name. And uh, the way we do this is just call this staff name, let's call this, uh, sorry, staff name blank. Oops, I can't type today. Um, and what we would do is leave the full staff name and the abbreviated, abbreviated staff name checked so that we're make, Finale knows that we're making a change with the staff style, except instead of actually t having something in the staff um, uh, name fields here, just empty them out so they're completely empty. So basically you're um, intentionally putting in a blank staff name. And when we do that, that uh, staff style will produce a, um, you know, it'll, it will make the uh, staff name disappear in that particular system. Another thing we can use these staff styles for if we want is um, we can do independent elements as staff styles. And I think I talked about this in some of the time signature and key signature series, but uh, let me just set up another one here. I'll call this new and I'm going to call it, uh, what is it, 23 independent uh key signature. All right, and the only thing I'm going to change in this entire box is under independent elements, I'm going to turn the key signature from a minus sign to a check sign. So now this uh, staff style will definitely have the independent key signature. Click OK, and then of course assign it to score and parts, independent key signature. And now just for these two bars, this flute can have its own independent key signature. So all I have to do now is just go to the key signature tool and just change this to G major, uh, bars six through seven. And you can see that uh, bars six and seven will change to G major and then back to F uh, in the, the following measure because after this point, the, the independence of the key signature goes away. So. All right, so that's an, a nifty little uh, thing that can be done there. That's independent key signatures as a staff style. One idea that I think is, is kind of neat is the ability to actually um, hide the repeat bars. So let's create a new staff style here. And I'm going to call this 24 um, hide repeats. And uh, the way I'm going to set this up is I'm just going to go down here where it says repeat bars and I'm going to uncheck repeat bars because now I don't want to see that. All right, so I've just created a staff style that hides repeat bars. Of course, I should probably put some repeat bars in here. Uh, let's put this guy here um, just like that. And so from the, from here, we can kind of create some interesting, uh, interesting things. So if I wanted to just hide the repeat bars in uh, this first measure in the vocals here, we could do that. And of course you can always um, apply staff styles on top of each other as long as they don't conflict. And uh, when you do select a, uh, a staff style that hides the repeat bars, you'll notice that I selected the whole bar. So it's actually hiding both the left bar and the right repeat bar. Uh, if I wanted to, what I could do is just select part of that measure and it doesn't even matter as long as it's like the second half of it. Um, and I'll do that again hide repeat bars, and you'll see that I'll be able to have this situation where there is no uh, repeat bar right there, all right? So we can have a, a little unique situation like that. What we could also do is, um, you know, take all of these measures, um, you know, down the up and down the stack here, and just uh, apply that same staff style, uh, hide repeats, and uh, what I'll end up with is something unique looking where the vocal part is repeating two measures, but everybody else is actually repeating only one measure, right? So the trick to this is that you do have to put the repeat bars um, everywhere that it, it could possibly be shown and then use the staff style to hide repeat bars uh, in a way so that you can get these sort of unique situations um, for whatever avant-garde uh, music that you're, you're doing that needs to have independent repeats like that. So that, I think that's a, a, a nifty little trick as well. And I could literally go on for hours about all the possible things that you can do uh, with staff styles. It's, it's really one of the most powerful features in Finale, in my opinion. Just the ability to um, temporarily override any of these things and hide things that are showing or show things that are hidden. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know, the sky's the limit. It, it's such a simple little window, but there's so much can be done uh, within this window if you kind of understand how it works and, uh, you know, what's going on. Um, the final thing that I want to talk about is uh, meta tools because you can program meta tools to these new staff styles if you want. 
Uh, now, if I go in here and do apply staff style to score and parts, again, you'll see the um, meta tools uh, in parentheses at the end of the staff style name. So slash notation is S, rhythmic notation is R, et cetera, and all the way down. Um, and now you can maybe notice that not all of the letters are being used and none of the numbers are being used. And all of these, well, the, the last two don't get... Um, uh, meta tools for some reason, poor alpha notes. Um, but the new ones that I created also don't have uh, meta tools. Um, we can add meta tools here, and you may notice that not all the letters are being used and none of the numbers are being used. So uh, I kind of figured this out. This Again, this is a default document in Finale. So uh, 0 through 9 is not used, and the following letters are also not used. Let me uh, check my notes here. C, I, J, P, U, V, and W. But of course, you can always, you know, reprogram one of these ones that you're not using. If you would never use the lyrics and chords only, you could also use Y. And the way to program these is kind of works like programming other meta tools in other tools. Just hold down Shift and then press the key that you want to program. So let's say Shift C and the Apply Staff Styles dialog box will appear, and then you can choose any of these staff styles, even the ones that have um, uh, meta tools already. You, you, if you select one, uh, the one bar repeat, for example, you, you would reassign um, the C to the one bar repeat, but we can choose one of the new ones. Let's, let's uh, choose staff name blank uh, for C, and then all you have to do now is just select it and press C, and you'll get that uh, blank staff name um, uh, staff style in that measure. And I'm just checking my notes, seeing if I missed anything. Yeah, I talked about double clicking brings you back into the, s the definition for that particular staff style. Um, I believe you can right click. Yeah, you can right click the, uh, the the gray bar as well. And you have some options to edit the staff style, which would take you back exactly the same place. It's the same as double clicking. Um, but you also have the option of clearing the selected staff style and using selected staff style for score and parts. So there's just a couple extra options here if you d right click directly on that little gray bar. Um, so I think that covers it. Again, you know, this is defining staff styles. It's really one of the most powerful things in Finale, in my opinion. So, you know, get used to it. Kind of, it's, it's well worth the effort to kind of figure out exactly what can be done and, um, and how to do it with that little um, defined staff style window. It's really, it's really an interesting little uh, corner of Finale, in my opinion. All right, so I think that's it for now. Um, I'm going to do one more video on staff styles uh, about copying and pasting staff styles specifically because, as I mentioned, it's a little bit more complex than it probably should be. But and uh, you know, once you have the information about it, you'll you'll be much happier about that. Um, other than that, I don't know if I'm going to do any other staff style videos, but uh, this is one of those areas in Finale that could definitely. Um, you know, if somebody has an idea about how to do something, um, I can certainly do a subscriber request on a, a certain way to set up a staff style or something. It's, it's kind of fertile ground for that type of, uh, for those type of lessons. So I'm happy to do that. All right. So I think that's it. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And, you know, I'll see you soon on the next video.